Hi everyone, my name is Leanne and today we're going to be pulling together my August to be read pile. So I have never really been like a monthly TBR kind of person. I would pull together TBRs for like specific readathons that have specific challenges and themes. So in those kinds of ways, I've sometimes done monthly TBRs, but I've never just done one as like a standard. And I think I would actually really benefit from the structure. Historically, I have thought of myself as someone that kind of likes to read by whim, very much a mood reader. I'd like to alternate what I'm reading. You know, I'd very rarely read like two romances back to back or two YAs back to back or two classics back to back and like anything like that. I'd always kind of swap up what I'm reading. And that is very influenced by like my mood and what's going on and a bunch of like circumstances that I can't predict at the beginning of the month. But where I'm at with my reading now and trying to get through a massive physical TBR, I feel like I would really benefit at least from some structure. So I have not created a super complicated game here. I love watching people's like variations of board games and challenges that they do to create their TBR every month. Uh, I don't want anything that complicated. I would like something quite simple. So I've created a TBR jar. Technically it's a TBR sugar bowl. It has never held sugar before, but this has been with me since I think 2018. It did break once and there's a big crack in it, um, but it has survived five house moves. I have put a bunch of prompts in here and my boyfriend has also put some prompts in. So obviously I know the ones that I've put in. I don't know what he's put in, so they will be a surprise to me. I'm gonna pick out five prompts every month and pick a book off my shelf that fits those prompts. So that will still give me some flexibility. I don't know why I'm still holding this. That will still give me some flexibility to read by whim and mood read, but it will just give me a little bit of structure. It will prevent me from having the indecision of what I read next, the running late for work and realizing that I need a new book for my commute and not knowing what to pick off the shelves. It will solve that problem for me. I've had a bit of a reshuffle of my shelves recently. And if you would like me to do a full bookshelf tour, do let me know. What is gonna be tricky is I'm mainly going to pick books off these shelves which have the vast majority of my fiction on them but I do have some hardback fiction books in my bedroom and all of my non-fiction is in my bedroom as well so it might just be a bit more challenging to kind of just remember those books are there but anyway I'm gonna give this a stir okay the first one I picked out is one that I wrote and that is a place name in the title so that is book number one Oh no. The next one I picked out is over 400 pages long. You may know my sweet spot is like the 320 mark. So that is kind of on the longer side of what I like to read. Okay, this is a good one. The next one is an Irish author. This is another good one. This is Magical Middle Grade. And the final prompt I've picked out is an author that you've read before. So I didn't pick out any of my boyfriend's prompts. Oh, I don't think I mentioned, I'm not doubling up on the prompts in any way. So it's not like I could read a magical middle grade that is over 400 pages. Like one book wouldn't fulfill more than one prompt. Okay, we're now gonna pick the books. I will definitely have books that fulfill four of these prompts. So like the magical middle grade, the over 400 pages long, the Irish author and an author I've read before. That's all very doable. But place in the title is quite specific. So I'm gonna start with looking for that one. Okay, so welcome to Lagos. I was really worried I was gonna struggle with this prompt, so I'm really happy to have found one really quickly. I was gonna like review all of my shelves to like line up all of the options for books that have place names in them. This is a book about five runaways who all take a bus to Lagos in search for a better life. It has been on my TBR for ages. So this is the perfect excuse to read it. Next, I'm gonna pick an Irish author. I know there are a couple of hardbacks that I have in my bedroom that I'm considering for this, but I'm just gonna have a quick scan of the shelves and see if there's anything else. So I'm gonna go for a young adult book. This is Inferno by Catherine Doyle. I have decided to implement a rule with my unread books that I cannot have more than two unread books by the same author on my shelves. So it would be really beneficial to that goal for me to read a Catherine Doyle book. I read the first book in this Mafia young adult romance series earlier this year that was called Vendetta and I absolutely loved it. It was one of my best reading experiences of the year. So I immediately went and bought the sequel and I haven't picked it up yet. Okay, now let's pick a magical middle grade. All of my children's books are on this shelf. For these TBRs, I am gonna try to avoid 
my workbooks. But if a prompt means I really need to pick one of my workbooks, I will. So for this, I'm going for Like a Curse by Elle McNichol. This is another sequel. It's the follow-up to Like a Charm. If it's the prompt, it's a magical middle grade. It is witchy. It is set in Scotland. I don't remember loads about the first book other than I enjoyed it. <laughs> But I pre-ordered this when it was first released and I haven't got around to reading it yet. I love Elle McNichol, so I'm gonna enjoy this. Okay, the one that also feels quite specific is over 400 pages long. Like an author I've read before should be quite easy. I mean, two of these books are authors that I've read before. So let's try find a book that is over 400 pages. Okay, so this is not only over 400 pages, it is nearly 600 pages. It is Last Chance Saloon by Marion Keys. Marion Keys is another author who is a victim of my habit of buying books by authors when I already have books from them on my shelves. I'm also going on holiday in August and I feel like a Marion Keys is the perfect thing to bring on holiday. I don't really know anything about the plot of this one, but I know the vibe that I'm expecting from a Marion Keys book, you know? So actually three of these books are authors that I've read before and I still need to pick a book that fulfills the author you've read before prompt. I was considering another book that was over 400 pages which is also by an author that I've read before but it was a young adult book and I do already have a young adult book and a middle grade in this stack so I feel like I didn't want another young adult book in there. I mean I will probably read another, another young adult book in the month but I just didn't want it as part of that stack. Maybe I should have included a non-fiction book in this as well. You know what I mean? Like the, that shelf is just kind of out of sight, out of mind in terms of doing this. But I think an author I've read from before will be harder with non-fiction than it would be with fiction. I'm just gonna pick another fiction book and then we'll try and read some other non-fiction books just in the month. Love Her or Lose Her by Tessa Bailey. This is the second book in the Hot and Hammered series. Fix Her Up is one of my favourite reads of the year so far. So I definitely really want to read the sequel. An author I've read from before, another author that <laughs> is one of those authors that I have multiple books from them on my shelf. I don't already have just like a straight up contemporary spicy romance on this pile. So I'm gonna add this one. I need to find a better way of filming this that isn't me just bent over and breaking my back a little bit. So this is the pile that I'm going to be reading in August. I mean, I will certainly try and read some other stuff, maybe some shorter stuff to kind of break these up, maybe incorporate some nonfiction as well, because there is no nonfiction in this stack. I'll probably read some workbooks in the month as well. It's really hot, I'm gonna go sit down again. <laughs> okay, that's better. <laughs> I think it's a relatively balanced stack, you know? I maybe could have come up with some alternate options if I'd spent a bit more time choosing. But the whole point of doing these prompts was to take away that time spent choosing. So I'm glad that I just kind of went immediately off what I saw quickly. It is interesting how I wasn't consciously kind of thinking about picking sequels, but I've ended up picking three of them. And I did notice as I went along that I was picking authors that I had read from before. But I do really like that I'm incorporating my desire to not have more than two unread books by the same author on my shelves. And I'm kind of chipping away at that. I feel like five books is a good number as well. Like I definitely still have some opportunity to read by whim. It's probably like half of what I will read in the month. Do you have any ways that you kind of gamify or prompt your reading? I would love to know down in the comments or if you would like to add a prompt to the TBR jar, leave it in a comment down below and I will add it in. I feel like I slightly struggled to come up with prompts. So honestly, I would love it if you could leave as many as you could down in the comments. Even if it doubles up with something that's already in there, because obviously I don't know what my boyfriend's put in there. It can just be added in again. It's fine. <laughs> I can't believe I was annoyed that I picked out a book over 400 pages and I decided to unnecessarily give myself a book that was nearly 600 pages. <laughs> Anyways, that is it for me today. I hope you're doing well and I will speak to you in my next video.